I will start with my wife, Tara. Tara is lovely and wonderful. She also escaped from her little Midwestern town and ran to the coast the absolute moment that she could, and I'm pretty sure her mom took that personally. Her mom was born and raised in and around that small town. So, my mother-in-law is emotionally immature. Tara read that one book about immature adult parents, and she finally understood her family dynamic in a way she never did before. My mother-in-law is not a bad or evil person. She usually means very well, but she's kind of, I don't know how to put it, self-centered. Like, her first thought process is always, how do I feel about this new information? Tara and I bought a little starter home last year. Screw interest rates, but we're hoping they come down and we can refinance. The place was too good to pass up, and her mother-in-law invited herself over last week. This is extremely on-brand for her, and we like to pick our battles in this family, so we just let her. Her mom, who is again not terrible, she just has bad emotional regulation and boundaries, shows up, drops her stuff in the spare room, and immediately starts giving herself the tour. Again, whatever. We actually hired a cleaner before she arrived, so we wouldn't worry. It's annoying, but that's life. So she's wandering around and comes to our bedroom. I have a jumbo-sized tub of generic Vaseline next to my bed because I use a nose CPAC, and my lips get chapped. So she picks it up and makes this really weird face and says, almost direct quote, well, I know what this is for. And I respond, oh, that's for chapped lips. We don't do it with Vaseline. My timing was good because my wife laughed, but my mother-in-law did not laugh. Then, for the next three days, she kept asking me, are you going to be gross again when I tried to make normal conversation? I said repeatedly that she was the one who made the joke, and her response was always, yeah, but that was a joke, like what I said was totally serious. And I guess it was, I mean, I was telling the truth, but I was only bantering because she started it. I didn't even invite her into our bedroom. Anyway, she brought it up over text with Tara, and there is subtle pressure from her to just apologize. I don't think I did anything wrong. Am I the idiot for telling my mother-in-law why I have Vaseline next to my bed? Not the idiot. She tried to make you blush, but then got mad because you made her blush, which is what this basically boils down to. The next time she says something about it, I would be just like, OMG, how much do you think about this one comment? The fact that it seems to be at the absolute forefront of your mind is making me almost as uncomfortable as the original joke. Can we just bury this entire incident? She was the one who first insinuated it was for intimacy. You just said it out loud. Anyone with even a slight sense of humor would find that funny. And you're right, she's the one with her mind in the gutter in the first place. She goes to your house uninvited, goes into your room without permission, thus invading your space, makes an inappropriate innuendo of something as innocuous as Vaseline by your bed, which you then smoothly brush off and make, admittedly, a funny joke about, and now you're the one who owes an apology? If she doesn't apologize, let her be offended and let her pound sand. OP, I'm only sorry you didn't keep up the banter every time she asked you if you were going to be gross. I won't be gross if you won't be nosy, etc. Don't apologize. Don't encourage your wife to apologize. If she brings it up in the future in front of other people, tell them she was snooping around and quote her exact words. She's an adult, for God's sake. She can dish it out but can't take it. Also, include a small pot of Vaseline in future gifts, wink wink. She needs to get a sense of humor or quit being nosy. My wife's younger sister, Anne, 31, has been staying with us for about six weeks after getting out of a rough relationship. Since she's moved in, I've noticed she talks a lot about how bad men are. I've also noticed her social media is now filled with similar sentiments. Lots of stuff about how men are liars, cheaters and worse. I just chalked it up to her getting out of a relationship and post-breakup emotions. But then, some of what she was saying and posting got pretty dark, to the point that I asked my wife about it and whether she thought Anne was okay. My wife said Anne is venting after a breakup. This is her way of processing emotions and getting her feelings out. She jokingly told me Anne refers to me as one of the good ones. I never talked to Anne specifically about this stuff. Anne had planned a trip with some friends to Nashville for a long weekend. Her flight was last Thursday. My wife was supposed to bring her to the airport, but she had something come up at work that she had to take care of. My wife asked me if I could bring Anne to the airport instead. I told my wife that I didn't feel comfortable doing that because I didn't want to be alone in a car with Anne. My wife asked me why, and I told her I didn't want to do anything that Anne might take the wrong way. She asked me what I meant by that, and I told her that given Anne's recent sentiments towards men, I didn't want to be alone in a car with Anne. I told her it would be best for everyone if Anne got an Uber or a female friend to drive her instead. My wife got upset by this, told me I was being ridiculous, and said Anne would never lie about me doing anything wrong. 
I told her I wanted to believe her, but I would rather her and Nan be angry with me for not giving her a ride than to have a potentially life-altering marriage-ending situation occur. My wife got more mad and asked me what exactly I was saying. I finally just came out and said that I don't want to be accused of anything by Anne or have anything I do or say taken the wrong way, so I feel the safest thing to do is to avoid being alone in a car with Anne completely. She told me I was being ridiculous and making this way harder than it needed to be. She said Anne isn't like that and that it would be a huge favour to both of them. I told her that Anne would have to find another way to get there because I was not going to risk it. Needless to say, neither my wife nor Anne are happy with me. Anne sent me texts telling me I was no different than every other man and that she thought I was better than that. My wife thinks I'm making a mountain out of a molehill, that I don't trust Anne and that I'm an idiot for even thinking Anne is capable of something like that. There is a lot of tension in our house now that Anne is back and I've been making it a point to avoid her unless my wife is around. Not the idiot. The fact that she switched to you're just like all the other men just because you're not giving her a ride should give your wife food for thought. That said, if you're not comfortable with someone alone, start recording on your phone and if you're unable to record video, record audio. The sister needs to move out of your house, dude. This is just going to get worse. I'm a woman and I've watched more than once women let bitterness over a failed relationship completely overtake their personality and life. It's very sad. Your wife isn't helping her sister by excusing her behavior. Her sister needs therapy, not enabling. Sister-in-law will now work overtime to turn OP and wife against each other. Sister-in-law would love to bond with her sister over a shared hatred. Misery loves company. Forget the trip to the airport. The sister needs to move out of your house. Now. If she has spare money to take trips with friends, she has money to find a roommate housing situation somewhere. Last night, my boyfriend, 24, and I, 24 female, tried to talk about our future together. We've been together for three years and want to come up with a budgeting plan to buy a house. While talking, I asked if he'd consider getting a job. Currently, he works at DoorDash and just finished a year of grad school. He's an aspiring jazz musician. Where we live, there aren't many gigs, so he hasn't been paid for performing all school year. He immediately shut down because he was caught off guard. In his mind, he'd planned to work at DoorDash all summer to earn money. He told me he couldn't stand the idea of working for someone else and that getting a real job just wasn't who he was. Context, I've worked since I was 16. I worked the entire time while he was in school, splitting our expenses 70-30. I've begged him to work in the past to take some of the load off, but instead he's been using student loans to cover rent for the semester. Honestly, if he genuinely followed through, I wouldn't even be mad that he was working at DoorDash. He makes decent money when he does it, but the thing is, every time he promises me that he'll work, he ends up not following through. I felt upset that he was bashing real job culture when I have had to work so much in my life to keep us where we are. We got into an argument, and ultimately I said that if he refused to acknowledge his toxic view of work culture, I couldn't be with him. He couldn't believe I said that so easily after three years together, so he drove off for a few hours. We're now at this point where neither of us is willing to budge. I will admit that I have an anxious attachment style. I push too hard in arguments and don't give things time to settle. Sometimes I need to be told that I'm right because I seek validation in arguments and it makes people upset with me, which is valid. I pushed last night and want to hear that I'm right. I can't tell if I was right or wrong for pushing this particular issue. Am I the idiot for telling my boyfriend off for his view on work culture? Not the idiot. Your boyfriend doesn't have a problem with work culture. He's just lazy. I know he doesn't have a problem with it because he's perfectly fine mooching off of you, who is only able to support the two of you because you have embraced work culture. This is a crystal ball to your future. Don't be someone else's doormat. Time to cut him loose. Yep, it's easy to live the free lifestyle of an artist when someone else is grinding a 9 to 5 to foot the bill. Lord save me from hippies who shout about the man and how everybody is a corporate drone or whatever they're yelling about these days while using the wages somebody made from being one of those corporate drones to fund their life where they're not actually creating anything or helping anybody or doing anything to add something to the world. He's not getting a real job because of any moral objections. If he were, he'd be trying to earn money so that OP doesn't have to work in a job that goes against his morals. He's using her to promote his ridiculous lifestyle. It's a slap in the face to artists who work really hard at not fulfilling jobs so they could get to a stage where they could live and make their art. 
Girl, cut ties and get into the lifeboat because this boy's ship is sinking and he'll take you and your financial stability into the murky waters with him. My wife's younger sister Beth, 26, is in recovery for alcoholism. She's currently living in a sober house after getting out of rehab. My wife wants Beth to move in with us after the sober house so that she has a support system. Beth and my wife feel like living with us would be good for her until she feels comfortable enough to live independently. My mother-in-law and father-in-law passed away during the global issue, which was a significant catalyst for Beth's drinking. So my wife and I are the only family that Beth has left. I'm not totally against the idea of Beth living with us. I agree that she should have supportive people around her. But what I don't agree with is my wife's insistence that we remove all alcohol from our house. My wife isn't saying that we should have to stop drinking to show solidarity with Beth, but that we should remove all alcohol from the house, at least at first. I maybe have a drink two or three nights a week, but when we bought our house, it had an unfinished basement, which I turned into a bar and game room. It's pretty full stocked, like stocked enough that we don't have room anywhere else in the house to store all of it. Also, it's stocked enough that dumping all of it would be a huge waste of money. Drinking all of it would require multiple fraternities from the local college and multiple parties. I'll have to get a storage unit to keep it all, and that's not a feasible option. This has become a point of contention between my wife and I. I feel like we do have some options. Maybe Beth just never goes into the basement. I could put a new lock on the door and only I would have the key. My wife thinks I'm being unsupportive and that I care more about the bar and alcohol than Beth's health and sobriety. I obviously care about Beth's health and want the best for her, but I put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into that basement and I spent a lot of money over the years stocking it to this point. My wife thinks that if I'm not willing to dump the alcohol, I should start asking friends if they want anything and give it away. I told my wife that if we need to have our house be 100% alcohol-free for Beth, then maybe she isn't ready to live with us and maybe she never will be. None of the options I've suggested have been acceptable to my wife. To her, it has to be all the alcohol gone. She told me it would be temporary until Beth feels more comfortable and we can all take baby steps toward having alcohol in the house again. I told my wife that I understand her desire and need to support her sister, but that I feel like she's taking this too far in trying to change how we live our lives to accommodate Beth. I want to be supportive of Beth too, but I also don't want to completely change how I live just because Beth is an alcoholic. My wife thinks I'm being an idiot and that if I can't get rid of the alcohol, maybe I have a problem too. Not the idiot. Your wife is asking for a lot of accommodations but isn't willing to negotiate for your comfort in your home. I wonder why locking the basement door with a hidden key isn't considered acceptable, as it will prevent access. If sister-in-law isn't serious about getting sober, nothing you all do will stop her from drinking, and the wife needs to get a grip. At this point, the OP should probably lock up the room from his wife too. If she's this unreasonable, she may donate it or destroy it herself and use her sister to justify it. Man, keeping the room locked up is a decent compromise, but Beth is leaving a sober house and your house isn't expected to be sober. Absolutely. Also, who determines how long Beth stays? You, your wife, or Beth? If I were in that position, I would feel very uncomfortable with there not being a time limit on how long Beth could stay. What if she never leaves? My dad died five months ago. It was really sudden. He wasn't sick. He just went to work one day and didn't return home. Dad had five kids. He had me, a male teen, Mia, a female tween, and Kai, a male tween, with our mom, and she died nine years ago. Dad got remarried five years ago and had two kids with his second wife. Dad had set it up so that Mia, Kai, and I would stay with his wife if something happened to him. He never brought this up. But when I found out, I wasn't really happy, and I expressed a wish to live with my maternal grandparents. Kai and Mia wanted to be with his wife. They call her mom and have a really close relationship with her and our half-siblings. They wanted me to stay as well. They said they didn't want to lose me too, and even though I assured them they would still see me, they were angry and sad. My dad's wife told me I should just stay. I could give her a chance to be a second mom to me and have her and my siblings for support. I told her I didn't want to live with her. An emergency custody hearing was held, and I spoke to the judge with my grandparents and my dad's wife in the room with us. He asked me why I wanted to go against my dad and if I would like to have some kind of shared custody set up for me. I said no, I wanted to live with my grandparents outright. I loved and respected them and needed them, but I didn't love or respect or need my dad's second wife. I loved Mia and Kai so much and I had nothing against my half-siblings, but I felt better being with my grandparents. The judge agreed. 
He ordered I could live with my grandparents while Kai and Mia could stay with my dad's wife. He did order the three of us to have individual therapy to help them not hate me, and that helped. They ask a lot of questions when I see them and they don't understand me not loving their mom, but they do get it now that she's not my mom like she is theirs. They know she's not their bio mom, she's the only mom they know. My dad's wife is furious and she's made many comments about my decision. She's also brought up what I said to the judge and the fact I don't love all four siblings is disgusting. But she said I turned my back on my family and I basically said I didn't care that she'd done her best to be a good mother to three kids that weren't hers. It wasn't good enough for me. She said my decision was totally unfair to everyone and I was selfish. Am I the idiot? Info. How much free babysitting did your stepmom lose when you left? Let's do the math. Opie was seven when his mother died and his siblings were toddlers. With two toddlers, his grandparents were the only people who had time for him. When stepmother came into the picture, she probably loved how mature and independent OP was after a few years of being left to raise himself. Shortly after the stepmother has two kids under five, history repeats itself. This was my first thought. Stepmom lost the oldest, and now she can't parentify him and make him responsible for helping with the kids and the house. He's also old enough to get a part-time job, which she could also have been planning to encourage with a view to him helping to support the family now that he's the man of the house. Add to that, depending on the parent's income, she could have been getting $200 plus per month for him from SSI. Not the idiot. I won't jump on the train that you're your stepmother's free babysitter, and I'm not going to assume anything nefarious of the stepmother. She's grieving too, and her intentions are probably in the kid's best interest. In her mind, she's probably trying to keep the three biological children together for the sake of her husband, but she's not handling how it's not working out well. That being said, you're a teen. If you don't want to live with them, you don't want to live with them, period. Your opinion matters.